Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in the next week, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, the stock market continued to rally last week as investors worldwide felt ease over the trade war. Uh, after President Trump imposed tariffs on $200 billion more of Chinese goods, that's 10% now and going up to 25% on January 1st, China's response to these tariffs was a little bit different than most people had expected. They actually lowered tariffs to their other trading partners, essentially making U.S. goods less desirable to Chinese users, uh, as uh, ours then would be more expensive. Um, they also said that um, they would never use currencies as a weapon and that they did not do that before when their currency, the yuan, fell pretty sharply. Uh, that left investors believing that China really had limited response that they could do, and uh, they really started to love that. Investors uh, bought stocks worldwide. You got surges in a lot of the foreign markets, some moving up some 3 or 4% to the upside, uh, as those markets really had languished. Um, also lagging here on our markets were the financials and the energy stocks, and they took over as leaders leaders on the upside as investors searched for value in stocks that had not yet moved. As interest rates go up, uh, of course, they believe that the banks will make more money because the steeper yield curve means that they borrow money for less and loan it out for more. Uh, and uh, in this world of improving uh, growth here in the U.S., that also is a good sign for them. So uh, that helped. As far as the energies go, Iran sanctions helped oil prices as they believe that that will continue to keep prices firm. There is a lot of oil out there, and towards the end of the week here, after oil was strong, it's starting to look pretty sloppy. As the stocks move up, the Dow Jones industrials had been well behind. In fact, it was uh, last January that the Dow Jones made a high, an all-time high. And then while the stock market st churned its way upwards throughout this entire year, uh, the Dow didn't do anything. It really had lagged. Well, that changed here this week as the Dow finally caught up and moved up to a new high. Um, that a new high uh, comes at a time when the Dow Jones Transportation Index is also making a new high. That has um, Dow theorists just uh, happy dancing in the streets as they say this is a buy signal. And what you read now is that generally six to nine months after this kind of a buy signal, the stock market continues to make upside gains. Well, if you look back at 2007, um, they uh, confirmed on the upside, uh, and uh, that was in July, and then it was three months later that the stock market made its peak uh, in October uh, and then started to roll over in a big way. If you look back to 2000, you got them both uh, moving up, making new highs in January, uh, and uh, that actually was the peak in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Dow Jones transportation average continued up until May uh, as the two of them were not confirming. So that was some five month period uh, that you had the stock market actually you know, holding up pretty well before it then went into the dot bomb crash in 2000. So while all of this looks like we have a confirmation and that you know, if you have all of these aspects of the economy in good shape and those stocks going up, 
Well, my sense is that while a bear market may not be ready to start, and I don't exactly think that it is, um, I still think that a correction is coming. Uh, and it may be that the midterms, uh, and as we start to get some sense about uh, the higher odds that the Democrats are going to get control of the House, well, then I think that the investors will start to get nervous. And, you know, while I don't think there's a bear market here yet, and I actually don't think it's coming until next year, I do think that a 10 or 15 percent correction is likely. And I think that there's a lot of risk, as I've been saying, coming into the fourth quarter of this year. Let's take a look at the ES. That is the 60-minute chart of the S&P 500, uh, which uh, we look at every single week. This is uh, a look at... Uh, how stocks trade overnight and then how stocks trade during the day. Uh, and this is uh, of a lot of interest, of course, to intraday traders, to day traders uh, who do trade the futures and a lot do actually stay up late at night or, you know, people that are in uh, Europe trade them in the middle of the night in Asia. So this gives you a look at that. You can see what happened is that what we got was a decline early in the week, actually until Tuesday morning, and then rallied throughout the rest of the week. On Monday, China said uh, they will not play defense on trade, and uh, Trump said the, the tariffs are working, and they threatened more, and you could see the market actually held overnight and then sold off here on Monday. Uh, POTUS then on Monday morning, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, in the air, late afternoon on uh, Monday, uh, imposed those $200 billion dollars uh, at 10 percent and 25 percent coming. China said they would respond and then overnight the market started to come back and the rebound came as tariffs essentially excluded some tech products. Uh, iWatch is one of them and uh, China responded with tariffs on some 60 billion dollars in U.S. goods. It was kind of light as far as that went. Then uh, China came out here on Wednesday said uh, overnight they won't use the currencies as a weapon and here are the financials as they that's where they started to jump in here uh, overnight as the bond market really started to get nailed this week uh, here and on uh, Wednesday which was a modest up day financials were getting stronger here uh, on Thursday overnight is where the news came out trade tensions easing China to lower tariffs uh, on its non-U.S. partners versus raising to the U.S. And got to wonder, is this considered a win for Trump? Or does it mean that they just don't have a lot more to fight back with without absolutely killing themselves? And the China economy is slowing, and they're very worried about more of that. And on Friday, it's been kind of a dull, choppy day. World stocks continued to move up uh, as they drove up on Thursday. They continued up on Friday. Uh, but then uh, this market that has gotten pretty frothy started to dance around in here and everybody's waiting for this realignment that's coming as the S&P uh, adds uh, one more sector uh, moving some stocks out of the technology sector and into the new communication sector and uh, that has this dancing around. For many of you by the time you uh, see this um, there will be uh, that news will be out and we'll have some sense about uh, how the markets reacted to that. Now the sense is that the uh, XLK will get sold and um, as uh, these many of these stocks move into the new communication uh, sector. So uh, for the week, uh, the stock market, we're going to call it mixed, even though it looks like it was a big up week when you look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 was up almost a percent. Uh, the NASDAQ just edging to the plus side small. And the Russell actually down on the week. So uh, money is certainly moving out of that third tier into what they consider to be more value. Uh, it's a much more conservative type of investing. And uh, that might be some sign that investors are a little nervous. But when you see the bond market falling apart, there's no, certainly no flight to safety in there or in this uh, weaker uh, dollar that we see going on here. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, where a lot of these high caps are, uh, have been moving, uh, which have been moving up uh, sharply, is, uh, has a gain around 2% on the week. So strong move upside for the Dow as it plays catch up. Bond market, 30 year um, here is uh, down one and a half points. We expected a down week and there it is. Uh, we had the uh, 10 year 
10-year uh, yields up about eight basis points. They traded as high as 3.09, uh, and uh, right now closing the week at around 3.07. So big gain in interest rates. The dollar normally would be rallying at a time when U.S. interest rates are going up because money coming in to take advantage of the higher interest rate that's changing and the dollar has become extremely weak here and we think the dollar is in a lot of trouble going forward. That of course will benefit the gold market which we think is a, uh, working on making a bottom in here. Uh, we'll show you that in the short term view. Uh, gold gains about three dollars on the week and that's after having done better and then pulling back, chopping between the support and resistance area that we showed you and uh, we'll show you that again. Oil uh, up about $1.50 on the week. Uh, as it finds the resistance up around 71 and a half, approaching 72, and then pulls back down on Friday closer uh, to $70, and we actually think it's gonna go uh, a bit lower from here in this retracement. That's the opening segment. We've got some good stuff coming up here as we show you the best and worst stocks for the week, and then, of course, bring you our short-term view for the coming week. All right, here we are. Uh, we're looking at the best and the worst stocks for the week. Uh, let me get that set up for you right now as that siren gets by in here. And uh, whoops, sorry about that. Let's get this chart in place so that you can see. Remember, we're looking at weekly charts in here uh, because the core of our analysis, cycle analysis, is done on the weekly charts. So let me get this aligned for you properly. And there you go. The first stock we're going to look at for the best stock for the week is Sun Power, SPWR. Now, you'll see that there are three cycle brackets on the bottom. The reason I have this is because I'm comparing the patterns in here between Sun Power and CSIQ, that's Canadian Solar, and First Solar. And you can see, basically, they have gotten out of rhythm. They were in rhythm pretty nicely uh, when they all were making bottoms right in this area right over here. You could see that. Uh, however, um, now they have gotten what we call out of phase. And the reason that the um, rally that we see in here, this big upward tick in here, and this is the best stock for the week, up about 20% on the week, the reason for that is because uh, their products have been exempted from tariffs, uh, less affecting for solar uh, and CSIQ. Um, this to us is good, uh, certainly, but you see the resistance zone and what happened when it got near there? Well, it started to back off. And the other ones, uh, First Solar is a negative pattern. It gains 5% on the week. CSIQ also gets dragged up, and it's a better pattern but topping, and that was up about 5% on the week. I, I like this one better for now, uh, but again, I don't think that there's a major amount of upside in there. Also, the drillers did really well on the week as uh, oil uh, has been firm, and we'll take a look at two of those. Noble Corp. You can see in here, this is actually a really nice pattern that we're looking at. As a matter of fact, when you know our uh, uh, chart uh, subscribers get our charts, one of the things we often co uh, comment on is the benefit of a positive configuration or a right-hand translation. This is a perfect example of that right in here. You can see that it rallied for most of the cycle and then only recorrected for about a month and that it closed way above where it started. That's a positive configuration. When that happens, the odds are about 70% or more that the next rally phase will take out the high. And you could see that happened in there perfectly. So uh, perfect stop here, that's at 161.8, makes a correction perfectly into the buy zone and then moves up. This is really classic look at excellent cycle um, an, a theory coming to fruition and uh, Noble Corp moves up really nicely. Uh, upside target was reasonably uh, up towards that 50% FIB, that's up over $7 and uh, we still think that it's got a little time and is likely to get there. RIG, which is Transocean, this has a similar pattern. We actually cannot change our uh, analysis uh, that we've drawn in there fast enough because of this amount of rise that it had in here, more than 
percent up on the week and really exploding uh, up here on Friday up seven percent no wonder I can't keep up with this this is up more like about 12 percent on the week it gets to the first resistance over here and it's the same thing you notice actually there are two positive configurations in here uh, that you can see uh, beautiful upward patterns right in there and that to us shows you how each of those brought new highs and this one to equal the high or better would get over 1430 and it looks like it's headed there when you can see that so here's your first resistance here this is a 78.6 percent confluence and this right over here is that cycle peak resistance and if you break out above that you're in still another positive situation you can see how you broke out above it over here and uh, now uh, really looking good so this is a, a very nice pattern and you learn a lot by looking at that usually when you get um, moves up in commodity stocks like these uh, oils you also get moves up by the uh, material stocks and we're getting uh, that occurring this week I'm going to show you four of them here in the best of the week uh, and the first one we're going to look at is valet v-a-l-e a uh, foreign ADR as a matter of fact uh, I'm going to show you two ADRs in here and this one almost looked like it was going to break down and then really saved itself so uh, you can look in here the reason that this blue dash line is there you can see is that's the DBB so I overlay that on often on the materials so I can get a sense for how they are moving in regard to the base metals don't forget DBB is made up of three base metals copper zinc and aluminum uh, so you get a lot of synchronicity in the movement between the DBB and some of these material stocks and here where we are again as you can see these rising configurations as it dances up this 34 week moving average this almost looked like it was going to break down it really had me thinking uh oh there's trouble but then it comes to life as you get a solid 12% plus 11% uh, plus uh, up gain for the week in valet and seemingly it's going to get above that 1524 number which is pretty close so you can see we have it maybe another month of potential upside maybe a little bit more uh, but then we think it'll start to struggle and run into problems FCX is the next one we're going to look at this is going to look like a messy chart to you the reason for that is is because we've got it overlaid with a lot of things on the bottom this is the copper pattern right over here this one right over here is the gold pattern so we, we overlay those because Freeport McMoran is a copper and gold stock we also have the DBB in there uh, as you can see and then this black one is the actual cycle for the dominant movement in FCX so we look at all of those and how they play with each other and uh, what we saw here was that there was a nesting actually that nesting is a little bit more over here and this decline came late just like that now we um, uh, often when you are in a negative cycle like this one where it breaks these supports that you see right over there that uh, it capitulates and goes for a longer period of time and then we have to adjust based on that now you can see that it's rallying sharply and this sell zone right over here is coming up and that's the resistance level so we expect that this rally will continue for some brief number of weeks a few more 1525 to about 1575 is the upside in there it rallies uh, about eight percent on stronger copper and S&P has upgraded the stock to stable well that must have meant before it was unstable it certainly looks like that to us take a look at Rio RIO this is Rio Tinto another one of the ADRs recently I was asked to send this char these charts to some of our subscribers and this is a little bit different than the one I sent out so if I sent out any of our level four members uh, the Rio chart and you look at this and say well that's not what I have well there's been adjustment in here as this took longer to come down and uh, it looks a lot like FCX right is it moving up sharply into that sell zone there's still room on the upside this is only the first or second week in the advance and they don't you can look how long the advances last in each of these this one lasted some three months this one uh, two and a half months this one two months so it's hard to get a top in the second week that's why we have it projected to move up the way we do into that sell zone and then fail the probabilities when you have the negative configuration as illustrated by this downward arrow here 
there, the probabilities of failing in this area, which is you know figured out by our swing high, swing low analysis, that uh, and you can learn how to do that uh, if you become a level two member and just get our videos. Um, this is uh, uh, the area that we it's getting into where it should have some trouble. So up 7% on the week, they have uh, come out with a buyback of $3.2 billion worth of shares, and that gave a lift in addition to the rest of the group moving up. If you watched, I gave a positive call on steels a couple of weeks ago, uh, and here is the beautiful upside movement in Allegheny. This is a steel company, and uh, you can see the list of our steel companies that we follow right there in the steel stocks. The low was due right in here. Those two blue spikes are plus or minus two or three weeks from where the ideal low would be. Well, it came pretty close. You can see that. And uh, now moving sharply up. There's our FIB target zone that comes off of this previous cycle. That gives it a target up there of above 30 to maybe 31 and a half. So we still think there is more to go there in uh, ATI. So materials, you can see, uh, getting a, a nice lift on the week. Under Armour, UAA moves up 9% as analysts upgrade this stock. I'm going to say no to that. As a matter of fact, I think the stock is a sell. And you can see a pattern that we're looking at in here. This rally, which is a nice engulfing pattern on this analyst upgrade, comes really at a time that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, you could see this uptick right over here in this previous cycle back there. And uh, that came at a time when it was too early. And then it had a modest pullback after that. So this rally was out of place. And then it came back again into the support zone. The thing is, is that this right in here, uh, with that low here and this low here was a positive cycle. You can see that. What we have here is that this, this intermediate low right over here is broken in this decline and it sets up a period where I think that we are going to be declining through uh, this date in November. So that says to me that that is uh, really a sell on that rally and I don't trust that rally whatsoever. And the last one we're going to look at in the best of the week is Caterpillar, C-A-T. We have upgraded this stock and this has our colored phasing in it so that you could see the rising phases, the corrective phases, and negative phases. Now, you see this rally that came late right over there, and that made no sense compared to where the low should be, and that failed. It's a lot like what I just showed you in Under Armour. Now, in this case, it's gotten above the 78.6%. We had a sell zone in here, actually, because of this negative configuration. Remember, I said negative configurations uh, bring you uh, failures about 70% of the time in those sell zones. But when you get through the 78.6% and threatening that last cycle peak, this is a very repaired stock. That says to us, while it may flounder in here up in the 160s area, and even have some kind of a correction, the worst looks like it's very much over for this stock. And uh, that's why we, we removed that sell zone as it got through it. As we put a note in here, it's a strong rising phase and really suggests that this stock is repaired in much better shape. Caterpillar analyst upgraded the stock this week. It gains 8% on the week in a very solid move. That is the best of the week, and coming up now, are the ugly ones, the worst of the week. All right, for the worst of the week, we're going to look at, uh, well, not many stocks. Uh, when you get a, a week like this one where the market has been basically pretty strong and there's no real earnings reports coming out, well, there's not much out there to knock stocks uh, unless it's some news item or some uh, corporate event or something like that that causes problems. Well, for Louisiana Pacific, that actually happened, and that is that um, there was mill closures based on Hurricane Florence. That normally would be a singular event, an anomalous thing, but now it appears that that may be longer term. And when you look at this pattern in here, you can get some good lessons in here on cycles and candles 
uh, which I have a video out on. Uh, and you can see that often the cycle, the candlesticks warn you of cycle peaks or cycle bottoms. In this case, I've got the candlesticks listed in here for each of those cycle peaks. And you can see in here that uh, dark cloud cover right over here brought that decline. The dark cloud, dark cloud cover brought that decline. This engulfing pattern came only in a fourth week, fifth week, and that was actually the top for that whole cycle. You can see how good that was. And here we are now uh, in, the, in the left third of this cycle with this big engulfing pattern. It would have to break this support right over here to actually be negative, but this engulfing pattern is meaningful. And uh, as it comes just slightly above that last high in the 31 area, I would say that if this stock rebounded, I think it's a sell. I think when you get this kind of a pattern, it's going to work its way lower uh, and that this is actually damaged. Talk about damage. Um, as interest rates go up, um, usually that's a sign that the economy is stronger. And sometimes you get periods where people scramble to buy homes. Uh, and the homes, the home sales are really strong. Well, that's not happening right now. Uh, Beezer Home, look at this one, down 7% on the week as analysts downgraded. It's a little bit late for a downgrade, wouldn't you say, when you look at this? Now, you can see the cyclical patterns in here. Look at those beautiful rhythms and that low as it comes right here due in the next couple of weeks. So what that says to me is that, you, you know, they put out a sell on it now. I think it's ridiculous to sell it here. Uh, I think you'll get a rebound to 13, 14, something like that. Maybe it's just above that 13-week moving average, which would get you just above $13. If you wanted to sell it, maybe then that would be the time, but maybe you could recover 15%. This is a horrible pattern in here, uh, and it's really a late downgrade, down about 7% on the week. Let's take a look at a couple more of these home builders while we're at it, since there's hardly any other stocks to look at here for the worst of the week. What do you think of that Lennar pattern? I mean, that's pretty ugly, isn't it? It points to a further decline into November. Uh, it's out of phase with what we saw. Uh, in Beezer Home, uh, and it doesn't matter. You can see right over here, this is the XBH. Beezer Home is actually in phase with the XBH, where you have uh, Lennar actually out of phase. So if you're going to get a little rally in here in the XBH, well, then you'd expect uh, Lennar to maybe make a little recovery. But uh, this is a very ugly pattern. Note the sell zone right in there. And again, that is the swing high, swing low analysis uh, that comes off of this previous cycle. Cycle, and look, it gets right up into there and rolls over very significantly. So that's uh, down 5% on the week, and this higher interest rates are negatively affecting this group and likely will continue to do so. Pulte Home, a very similar thing. Here's your resistance zone right in here. It gets up into there, gives you that big engulfing at that point, uh, and then it falls right to this period right over here. You can see that's where the uh, ideal low would have been, and then you do for a rally that goes nowhere. It fails and comes down again. So you can see in here, if you just look at the out of phase situation between the XBH and uh, the pattern in Pulte Home, this says a little rally coming in the XBH. So you get one of these and then crack. Yes, into December is what it looks like in here. And you can see both of them coming down in towards the end of the year. So Pulte Home, I think if you get a rally in there, it's pretty horrible. Same thing for KB Home, pretty negative, down 4% uh, on the week. And the last stock that I'm going to look at in here for the worst of the week, and as I said, there's not very much, is JWM. This is, uh, I'm sorry, JWN, that is Nordstrom. This uh, stock is uh, in the worst of the week. Well, it fell 6% on the week. And uh, this is, the valuations have gotten crazy for, for this compared to the rest of the group. There's been so much news in here about this stock going private. It's crazy. You can see in here, going private, uh, uh, right over here, you get a rally. Uh, here, going private is postponed, uh, and it gets killed. Here, it's close to going private. You've had all that rally. Here, they don't know if they can get the financing, and it never did go private. Uh, but the stock took 
took off all on its own, but jumping up to about a 20 PE in this group is too high. You get this evening star pattern in here, and now it looks like it's going to decline. You can see in here the date is uh, December 30th. So this is a top. The stock is very unlikely to be able to make any upside progress anymore. It will probably give you a little bit of a bounce. You can see in here there's a smaller pattern also in play. So we think it declines into November, gets a bit of a Christmas bounce, and then rolls over again and gets hammered. So we're going to call this stock done, cooked, over with, um, and uh, uh, in the retail department store category, um, well, Walmart, um, they're talking now about the situation with costs going up because of China, I think we're going to start to see some more problems uh, here in the department store category and uh, JWN. I think this is just the beginning of whatever this correction comes to. Note over here, you can see these two peaks right there. I'm going to grab a, uh, a line right there so you can see that peak here and that peak there. That's approximately the counter trend support at about 54. It would not surprise me to see this stock at 54 again when you look at that. So uh, that's a look at JWN and we're going to say to that is a, a stock that has topped and it is a sell. That is it for uh, the um, uh, best uh, of the week, worst and the worst of the week. And uh, we're going to be right back and I'm going to bring you the short term view for the coming week. Oh, I'm going to stay with you. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, sometimes uh, the, when we go through the production, uh, we're, we're ready with things, and sometimes we're not. So we're apparently not ready with the short-term view bump right now. So we're going to get right into uh, the short-term view from here. Before I get into the short-term view, I actually want to share a couple of emails that I uh, got from uh, our uh, from our members, our viewers, and uh, these are really interesting. So uh, the first one I'm going to share with you uh, is from Rod T. You know, it's not often that I get uh, emails like this uh, that uh, talk uh, where I get several of them in the same week that talk about our videos and using combinations of the videos to uh, improve trading and their knowledge. Rod says uh, that he put together the teachings of three videos this week uh, to really improve his understanding of a strategic option trading style. The three videos he looked at were developing a winning strategic option trading style, uh, rolling option trades, changing the mindset, and choosing a credit or debit spread. So those are three things that are really um, three videos that we did, and these are classes, the, the things that we teach, uh, in order uh, to really help you improve uh, as a trader. Th those r r really changed some things uh, for Rod, he said, as he really started to clear things up in his mind uh, about understanding how to put it together uh, to be a strategic option trader. I'm thrilled. Thank you, Rod, for sending that great email. Uh, on that. Balin B writes me, and this is one came Thursday and one came Friday, and he said he combined two videos. Uh, 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 this uh, 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 the one was um, the uh, to, uh, to help, I'm sorry, one was called Index Comparisons, Choosing the Best for a Trade. In other words, if he's a directional trader, what index do you go after or if you're a day trader? And the other one was understanding market leadership. And this, he said, really helped uh, as far as his understanding of movement of the indexes, uh, which is obviously his focus. Of course, we have over 300 videos uh, in our um, video library. And these are, you know, some of them are time sensitive, like when we do Future Speak, uh, which we do every Wednesday. And uh, many of them are in uh, a style strategy plan uh, or in technical um, and tools for tech with technical analysis. Um, there's, there's so many of them, and this is how you learn, by learning from my teachings from 44 years. So uh, thanks for great emails, uh, Rod and Balin, and uh, I, uh, I really would encourage our members to, to write me with things like this so I know really what's worked and what's helped for you. Uh, if you want to become 
a, a level two member where you can get our videos and do this kind of study, uh, you can just write me for a special, or in fact, write to support, because I'll be on vacation next week, support at askslim.com and ask for the level two if you just want the videos, or level three if you want our rankings and trade setups, oh, and the videos, of course, and level four if you want our charts on your TOS platform, plus rankings and setups in all of our videos, all include the uh, stock index report uh, which comes out on Thursday so great amount of information I love being able to share testimonials like this it's uh, an amazing thing when I get those uh, so again yeah I'm on vacation uh, this coming week there will be no videos no market week uh, in the coming week no short-term view uh, and don't forget, follow me on Twitter at Ask Slim and uh, become a subscriber on YouTube. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and put comments uh, on YouTube also. So I get some sense about what you like, what you want, all of those things. So I appreciate it. All right, so now we actually are going to get into our short-term view, which we do every week. And uh, we're going to look at daily chart. We do the daily chart uh, because it's short term. We also do a lot of analysis on interday charts, uh, mostly on the two hour charts, which are included that analysis uh, for all of the 24 futures contracts that we analyze. Uh, we do weekly, daily, and uh, very, very important two-hour information uh, on uh, all of the futures that we analyze, futures and indexes. All right, so now we're going to get into this. We're going to start out by looking at light crude uh, as uh, we usually start. And uh, let me just get to the daily chart here for you. And here we go. So first thing I want to say is that uh, how, how we did last week, and we measure this by, by pattern, by price levels, by uh, whether we said they're going to be up or down for the week. And uh, we got three of the, uh, of, the, of the five markets that we look at really well. The two that we missed on were light crude, which was stronger uh, than we had expected and of course the stock market which we thought would have a down week and well depends on what you look at it was basically a strong week and mixed uh, if you add in the declining Russell so we didn't get either of those right we're gonna take no credit for that we're gonna be 60 percent correct uh, for the week and we'll say we'll take it uh, and we're gonna get right here and in the rhythm uh, in the stock market uh, before you know it and uh, that'll be a nice uh, for us all believe me uh, let's take a look here as we look at light crude we're gonna look at two harmonic families uh, in here uh, as we look at light crude so there's those two big uh, harmonic families and I want you to note that this target zone right up over here that uh, we almost got to and couldn't quite get to it each of these large patterns that you're looking at is made up of three small patterns you could see they're very clear the dotted lines show you the small ones we'll call that the dominant and the minor so this middle minor uh, has been rallying now and so has the dominant and that's been pushing it up and you can see when you get them both being pushed up you get positive momentum you can see that green arrow right there that shows you that there was positive momentum right in there that's where it was established and the market has been strong ever since that point now what we're getting to and let me get a little closer look for you to see is it got just past that cycle peak and then started to resist in there for this week we're looking for it kind of to chop down and be a down week now it looks like it could fall for three four days and then kind of rally back we're expecting a pullback we're going to look for downside in here that takes you to the bottom of the slim ribbon you see that coming up we don't think momentum is going to break down because it's not much time left in this minor cycle uh, right over here is about uh, we'll call it uh, 69.30 or so and then this lower number over here is about 68.60 so that would be the extreme on the downside we think it's most likely that that slim ribbon is going to continue to give it support and then it starts to move up again but you'll notice that you see this bigger dominant pattern rolling over that's why we don't have that next minor cycle as being really strong 
the probabilities of it rallying a lot are not good. As a matter of fact, if you look at that last yellow period, that's what we're going to be moving into right over there, where you get some rally that fails and then you get a big decline. That was consistently good in each of these. You can see that right there, where each of them brought failing rallies, and we're going to likely be entering into that period soon. It is a period where it's highly likely that oil will struggle and move to the downside. Note we have this labeled there as a period of risk coming up in there. So we think that we've seen the best, basically the best for oil prices. Now we have one little time period over here where it could hit that target zone. You see it tried and couldn't quite make it. Uh, and then we think it's going to move down. Uh, we'll look for um, shallow declines based on the upward momentum and this minor support. And we'll look for a somewhat modest down week there in light crude. The next one we're going to look at is the dollar, dollar sign DXY. So the dollar uh, is a um, is in a decline there that you can see that is ominous. It broke the head and shoulders. You can see the beautiful head and shoulders in there that we talked about. This was the sell zone. That reason that sell zone developed is because the, um, the depth of this decline. When you get magnitude of giving back about 90% of the previous rally, the probabilities are better than 70% that it's going to fail in the next rally, and that's what it did. Not only did it fail, but it broke the neckline. It broke minor support right over there and is now moving down. What we expect for the dollar is maybe a few more down days in here. Hit this FIB target zone right over here and then get a bounce. We think that this period right in here is likely the period where this is where it's going to help gold and silver make the lows if we get this little bounce in here as they weaken a little bit but then you see what happens right over here that's why we like gold and silver for a rally out in this period of october uh, i'll show you that when we look at the gold chart so we're going to look for uh, a dip three four days into here into that target zone below 9370 and then get a bounce and we would consider that uh, setting up for a minor down week in there uh, as it looks like down up is what it looks like which doesn't give it a lot of change. Next thing we're going to look at is the gold. Now we said last week we thought it was going to be another week of being stuck in this range and that's exactly what it did. Now pardon all of the drawings in there but we have a lot of things that we look at in here. This is the right over here is the silver, uh, this is the GDX right there, this is the gold uh, intermediate cycle right there and this is the minor cycle right there and uh, this looks to us like this has some period in here of of another dip. Now if, if we get a bounce in the dollar like we expect and you could see gold moving down today ten dollars when the dollar got a minor bounce so it's very susceptible to declining in here still we think it's going to hold and we think it's a buy in this area around 1190 a plus or minus five dollars is where we think the buy is sometime in the next week and then we think that october is going to be the time period where you get a rally this is opposite to what we showed you in the dollar so we think this is setting up for a bullish move in gold silver and in the gold miners. Now, I don't think this is the big one on the upside. I still think that there's risk out into December after this rally and that uh, the real good time, I'm sorry, November, uh, and that the real good time is December, January, February for the gold market. So we're just going to look for a move in gold that could take it from 1190 to maybe 1240, 1250, but still that would be a good trade and be very good for the gold stocks. So that is a look at GC. Fortunately, slash ZB is the bond market. The bond market is, you know, just has been in free fall, as you can see in here. And when we look at the intermediate patterns, uh, we should be getting at a point where we get a bounce, uh, some move up for some weeks. Um, overall, this is um, pure ugliness, and you can see this. See these tails right in here. That's known as a tweezer bottom. That is a very high probability that we've seen a short-term low in there. So maybe a fool around, come down a little bit for a couple days. We'll call it a couple days of potential chop. Uh, and then a strong rally in here uh, to get in a bounce, getting you up to potentially 41 and a half 
and then you hit those resistant zones, which we think is a cell zone. Uh, we don't have it listed as such, but we think it's likely that it's not going to do a lot better than that. Uh, so we're going to call the coming week as kind of choppy early and then developing into a rally. Uh, this is a bad long-term chart and a bad long-term scenario we're looking at. And that's why we think that rallies are not likely to be able to continue much on the upside. And that is a big downgrade by us because when we did our, did our intermediate work, until this last week when we got the breakdown, it was setting up for a better period out for the next uh, couple of months. But now it's changed that, and we have to look at the data and say, what is the data telling us? What is, the, what is that saying to us? And it's saying to us that there is a much higher interest rates out there. And uh, we'll, know, we'll know soon if that's uh, going to negatively affect the stock market. Speaking of the stock market, uh, what we expected last week was that we would get a rally early week and that it would then fail and move to the downside. Well, m we got one day of sell-off early in the week and then it rallied for the rest of the week uh, and then started to maybe give a little ground here on Friday as the NASDAQ is pushing down. But that's all related to this change in the S&P 500. So we get no credit for that. Uh, that was not uh, really what we expected in the market. And uh, I want to take credit when it's due uh, and uh, say when it's not. So here's a look at the S&P 500 now. Now, there are uh, this, this cycle right over here, the rut cycle coming down. Uh, and this cycle that you can see right over here, uh, that's the shifted rut cycle coming down. Those are all pointing to some early weakness in here. But then you get into this period of rally again. The risks really pick up late September at, in early October, and you can see the projections in here. We have these two out-of-phase cycles that we're looking at, and that is uh, a consideration to expect a choppy market coming forward in here. So right now the market's not able to give any ground in here, and we think even an early dip in the coming week will look for a decline through midweek, uh, maybe testing the area of 29.11 uh, down to this middle of support in here, uh, 29. Um, around 29 even. Last week we said we thought the market would be buoyant, not give a lot of ground, because the momentum remains strong. You can see it's still strong in here by the slim ribbon. And we think that even if you get an early dip, the slim ribbon is going to hold it, and then it's going to try to rally again. The question is, will it Will it fall sharper and give you a modest rally as we're looking in here, or will it be just a tiny little downtick in here and then uh, move up to a new high before it rolls over? I have it drawn in the more bearish scenario uh, in there, uh, and that this blue uh, will be rolling over and be preventing much of a rally, that blue ideal cycle on the bottom. However, that based on all of these positive configurations in here that you see and riding up the slim ribbon, that's just a, a guess, and it's a bias by me, and the technicals in here look m stronger than I have drawn them in here. So we're going to look for uh, down, up, choppy week, uh, maybe finishing uh, the week just a small down week, testing those support areas, and then uh, maybe even choppy if we're right about that for the next two weeks before it then starts to roll over. Of course, I won't be doing this next week so because uh, I'm on vacation, so we'll see uh, how that pans out. We're going to look for a choppiness coming into the market over these next couple weeks as uh, we see these out-of-phase cycles in here uh, often will bring some choppiness in there. And if you, you know, don't, uh, if you don't understand these out-of-phase cycles, these lows in here tell you where there is significant lows likely to occur. <coughs> the same thing for this one. And you can see that each of these lows, this one here was an important low, this was a minor low right there, an important low right over here, and right over here, a minor low coming, and then an important low way out over here in the early part of October. So each of those has been meaningful in these patterns. That's why we still have them all on there, uh, waiting for some clarity. Down week slightly, and still buoyant as we still see a lot of strength in this market. That is everything that we're going to show you today 
in the short term view. I hope that was all extremely valuable to you. <coughs> Don't forget to uh, follow me on Twitter at Slim and to become a YouTube subscriber. Send an email to support at AskSlim.com. Uh, it's, it's about supporting yourself and getting uh, all of the lessons that we teach and uh, also supporting us so that we can pay the staff that we have so that we can keep bringing this to you every single week and bringing what we do to all of our subscribers. So um, at very least, um, look at our stock index report. Uh, it's only $19 a month, and we give you a, a tremendous amount of information on the stock indexes as far as patterns and uh, momentum and projections, all of those. So uh, just go to our website, click on stock index report, and sign up for that for just 19 bucks. All right, that's it. I want you to have an extremely uh, great two weeks out there uh, while we're away. I want you to be so careful. It is so crazy out there. We're always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the center and I'm going to a show.